something that is a result of working memory problems, difficulty in, in um, remembering step one of the math problem in order to proceed to step two and do it quickly enough to get through a time test? Or is it a perceptual reasoning issue um, in terms of being able to visualize how math concepts connect to each other? Or I, does it just depend? I think it would depend, but I think often it's like, it's like a slower rate of processing and a slower retrieval. What's called retrieval fluency, how quickly you can pull things out of memory. And most people have a lot of stuff in there, but with some people they have that tip of the tongue problem where it just takes them longer to pull it out. And so some, I, I would call it a retrieval fluency or a processing speed weakness. And so then a um, implication for the classroom is to get extra time on tests. For sure. If there's a working memory issue. Oh, sure. Or no timing on tests. Or... No timing would be great. Now, some people won't do that, but yeah. usually, usually they kind of put a limit on it, like a time and a half, uh, especially at the college level. Yeah. It has to be more clearly defined. But <clears throat> at the high school level, they often say time and a half or double time. Uh -huh. Now the kid may not always take that amount of time, but they usually kind of make it clear. Or some, you know, once in a while it will just be extended time as long as you want. How does that usually work on the college entrance type tests like SATs or ACTs? Which are time tests and usually pretty high pressure. I mean, you know, require pretty fast. Mm -hmm. Well, if especially if a student has a history of, of uh, ADHD or learning disorders accompanied by problems with working memory and processing speed weaknesses, so that it does take them longer. And especially if they have a history of accommodations, uh, as in being given extended time for tests and being allowed to take tests in a separate room where it's, you know, it's not disruptive at all, or it's really quiet, then it will often work. Now I say, keep saying, especially if, especially if, because I, I've been, this is a daily problem, okay, where people come in with a, especially high school kids who come in and need to be reassessed, and they've been assessed uh, either by another private person or by, maybe by the public school, but now they're in a private school, or now they're just a junior and the school doesn't really have to reassess them. Um, but we, you know, Especially if you have a good history of accommodations and if the testing continues to show processing speed weaknesses and working memory weaknesses, there's a good chance you would get extended time. Now on an ACT or an SAT, it's not just like take whatever you want. It's always, we'll give you one and a half. Or we'll give, so that means if it's 60 minutes, you get 90 minutes. Or we'll give you double time. If you had terrible reading skills, they might say, we'll let you use the, um, the CD version or the taped version. Uh, now, I have read, years ago, like 10 years ago, I read an entire ACT to a student. Oh, it was so bad. It's so boring. If I had to take the ACT now, that's it. I flunk because it, it's really boring, especially the science part. But, um, isn't there a formal diagnosis that has to be made, a formal diagnosis before they are allotted that time for ACT or SAT? Yeah, they want to see a formal. Now, can they take a formal diagnosis, say, from elementary? Do they have to have, have it repeated again in high school? Yeah, ACT or SAT will want to see something within the past three years. Three years? Yeah, and you can go ahead and get on the, uh, you can get on the ACT website mm -hmm. and look for and there's subsections there that tell you what criteria they want to see, what kind of assessment information they want to see. Now at the college level, they, want to use, they usually want to see a DSM-4 diagnosis. They, they don't just go for LD and reading. Mm -hmm. They want to see reading disorder, ADHD. And so colleges are more, it's a, it's, there's a split, you know, between what happens in the high school and junior high and elementary and what happens in college. It's a different world, what they want to see. and So they want to see a, a real diagnosis. With the, you know, the time testing, I don't know what, you, what you've heard about this, but like, for example, Russell Barkley would say extended time is not helpful for ADHD. It's 
you give them a timer, they get as much time as everyone else, but they get to stop and start the timer because it's this need to get up and move. And so, they, what I think, if I heard him right, he was saying, these kids mismanage time, why give them more of something they mismanage? Yeah, but I, 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 I mm -hmm. sort of agree with that, but I think then the reality is, ACT is probably not going to allow, allow you to use a timer and get up and walk around and dink around and then sit back down and turn the timer back on. They just, I just don't think they'll allow it, you know, because they're too, they want it to be done semi-correctly. So I, I guess I have to say, though, that my experience has been when I've heard back from parents, because often when I test people, that's the last I hear from them, you know, unless, I, unless they come back for reassessment. But sometimes people call me and tell me, and their scores do go up. They're going to go up from an 18 to a yeah. 24, you know? And you're right about the ACT. I'm just talking about it in the classroom, taking tests to get up and get a drink or something every 15, 20 minutes might be more helpful than here, to sit here as long as you want. Or, or whatever. I know that's not what they're saying. But. No, I think, that's, I think that's kind of a good idea, having them use a timer. I mean, it would either be you're having to sit there and time them when they're on and when they're up, or them doing it themselves, that that's kind of a good idea. And he's, I'm sure he's right, you know, because he's, I'm sure he's right about it, but. But it is more problematic, because are they going and looking up answers on their cell phone? And There's you know, that too, yeah. Or do they sit there and play with the timer? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 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 like, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's like, a, it's like a, I see at least weekly, kids who are coming in for reassessments to apply for the ACT and the, and the SAT and because they need the three-year reassessment. If they come in as a 16 or 17-year-old and they've never been diagnosed before, ACT is going to go over the assessment report with a magnifying glass. You know, they're going to look at it really closely because it's a new diagnosis, if, if it is legitimate, which it is, you know, but still they want to and then another thing, they, all, they will often turn you down if it still isn't having a big impact on their functioning in school. And they'll say, well, they're still getting Bs, and, uh, and so it's not enough of, a, uh, enough of a problem. The scores are persuasive. If you have really low processing speed scores in conjunction with really low scores on reading fluency, math fluency, uh, writing fluency, that's, that's more convincing. And I always focus on those things in the report, too. I, I really stress those in the report. So, but still, I get surprised all the time. When you see, like, trouble with math fluency, but they do fine in reading fluency, it's hard. It's a, you can't really say they have a general fluency problem. Is that where you get into, well, that's verbal, or, or I'm sorry, uh, perceptual versus yeah, yeah, I think so. I think, and I, I do see that where reading fluency is can be really low, but or can be okay, but math fluency will be slow. And some of it could be the working memory and the, the retrieval. They're having to retrieve those facts, and whereas with reading, they've been exposed enough, they can retrieve that more readily too. Yeah. Is, um, when you said under working memory, memorizing factual information is one of the big challenges. Is the kind of factual information you're talking about things like times tables and the order of the presidents? Are those, like times tables, is that a math thing or is that a working memory thing? Well. Or memorizing the presidents, you know, like I gotta memorize all of them in order or something. I, I think when you think about working memory, the idea is that you, working memory is usually best for just immediate problem solving and immediate doing something. If, if a person is lecturing, you can write and, you're, and you complete the sentence while new stuff is coming in. So you're holding it and then here comes this new stuff. And so it's kind of a complex process, but when I think of that math facts, and I think more about long-term memory and I think about retrieval fluency and just how easily you can pull it out. And what's retrieval fluency related to? Is that well, retrieval fluency would be you have the information in there, you've learned it, but it takes you a long time to recall it, or you're slow in recalling it. So, so that's processing speed. Okay. Yeah, that would be that would be a, 
sort of processing speed. It would be a speed of information retrieval, how fast you can recall something. And you may, you just need more time to sit there and think about it. But getting, I don't mean to get make it confusing about the remembering factual information, but if you, I think that I've always been a little confused by that too, where they say, well, it's hard to learn factual information. But I think that's more about holding it in memory and getting exposed to it over and over again so it goes into long-term memory. But if you have short-term memory problems, then you